everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, the talk on Caspian, the Carbon Aware Scheduling and Placement talk. Uh, first, let me congratulate you on your endurance and tenacity uh, that you're coming and attending uh, at the very last uh, session, almost last session on the conference. Let me introduce myself first. My name is Asher Tantawi. I'm with IBM Research and my colleague. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Sayyeda Bahraini. I'm a postdoc researcher in IBM Research. All right, so we'll walk you through this uh, activity or project that we started. Uh, it's not in, in, in CNCF, but we're planning to be there. We're going to talk about scheduling. We're going to talk about dispatching. We're going to talk about jobs, uh, multi-clusters, uh, queuing, Coopsteller, but most importantly, carbon and energy. So what is Caspian? <clears throat> Uh, the motivation for, for us getting onto this project is obviously that the world is getting or trying to get greener and greener. And uh, we all know that in data centers and in, in clusters and Kubernetes clusters especially, now we have a lot of GPUs and we have a lot of training jobs running and they, they consume uh, obviously a lot of GPU cycles for very long periods of time, minutes, hours, days, and, and months in some cases. So what we're tr trying to do is schedule jobs so that we can minimize the carbon footprint of running those jobs on those power hungry devices. There are many things one could do. Uh, we can make the devices more efficient. You can make better cooling, better this and that. We're going to try with this project something very simple, which is schedule jobs at the right time, at the right place. And I'll go through what do I mean by that. And that's what Caspian is all about. <clears throat> so I don't have to remind you of the amount of uh, car the carbon footprint due to running these uh, LLM training and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, they are usually... Uh, uh, equivalent to, I don't know, they count how many round trips and how many car trips in a lifetime and so on. You all know that. The problem is that it's increasing. It's getting worse by the day. Okay? The good thing, however, that we're exploiting in this project is that if you look at the generation of electricity that goes into these data centers, come from uh, various or a mix of of supplies, of energy supplies. Some of them are renewable, some of them are not. And this, this mix you see here on the left depends on the geography of where the data center is. Some geographies have more renewal percentage of mix than others. As you can see here, this is real data uh, from uh, Canada, for example, in Toronto. Uh, they have a lot of nuclear in this case and so on and so forth. So it varies from location to location, the mix itself of where the energy is coming from. That's one aspect. The other aspect is over time, that mix changes, depending on how much sun there is, is it day, is it night, and so on and so forth. So we're gonna try to exploit that. If you have a multi-cluster arrangement that clusters are in different locations, and over time the mix is changing, we're gonna try to schedule those jobs that take a long time and they are power hungry at the right place with, with one of those clusters at the right time. If we have the luxury of, of shifting the job a little bit by delaying it a little bit within a tolerable amount which is specified by the user. That's the whole idea. Uh, if you're not familiar, there's something called the, the carbon intensity. The carbon intensity takes this mix that I showed you and calculates the one value which is how much carbon, given that mix, uh, that is emitted per energy unit. So for example, for every kilowatt hour of energy, how much carbon is emitted? And that depends on the mix. If you have a lot of renewable energy in the mix, then this carbon intensity would be low and it would be higher otherwise. So there is a way to compute that. And this carbon intensity is a function of time 
as, as, as I showed you before. Now, since we're after carbon, we have to figure out what is carbon, right? Carbon emission due to this job running uh, is really a product of three things. One is the intensity that I just talked about at that location at that time, uh, times the power consumption. The units are shown here in yellow. So carbon intensity is how much carbon per energy, and the two terms here is the energy. Energy is power times time. Power is your power consumption, the devices that the job is running on. How much power does it, uh, does it emit? So that depends on how efficient the devices are. It depends on maybe other things like if you've been to the talk yesterday, the peak stock, peaks handle this particular thing, which is tries to minimize the power. This is a power aware scheduler. Uh, and the third component is how long the job takes. Uh, so in Caspian, we don't touch that. There are, of course, ways of dealing with that if, you, if one can, can somehow make the length of time a little smaller by adjusting maybe hyperparameters, watching the accuracy, precision, and so on and so forth. We don't deal with that in Caspian. We deal to some extent with the choice of hardware within uh, if, if one data center or one cluster has better hard, hardware than the other, but more importantly, we, we deal with the carbon intensity in order to minimize the total carbon. So that's the whole idea. We minimize the total carbon that le left, uh, the left part of the equation by scheduling those jobs wherever on whichever cluster and whenever in time when the carbon intensity is low. Of course, not all jobs or not all workload is shiftable as we want. We cannot shift it in time um, positively. You cannot shift it in negative in time before it arrives. But if, if it's a, maybe a schedulable or, or, or a job that is run every day or something like that, you can do that. And some jobs are not shiftable at all. So there is some tolerance, and that's what I talked about before. We assume that a job one submits a job, a training job, for example, would have a deadline, like you have to finish my job by six o'clock tonight. But it could be hard or it could be soft. Our assumption is that it's a soft deadline uh, in, in what I'm gonna sh we're going to show you today. Uh, but we try to keep that as much as possible close to the deadline and not go beyond the deadline much. And you're going to see that in the demo. In the demo. Uh, so. Pictorially, here is the picture of the problem that we're trying to solve. We have multiple data centers or multiple clusters, and we have jobs that arrive. A job is described in the manifest or the YAML file, an estimate of how long the job will run, an estimate uh, and a resource requirement for that job, and a deadline. Okay, and our opt there is a dispatcher. Obviously, there's a queue of these jobs and a dispatcher. That's not Casbin. Casbin really is the brain, is the decision maker, is the thing that's going to decide optimally for each job where should it go and when it, does it run. <clears throat> okay, so the way we do that is we formulate an optimization problem. Uh, we discretize time, so we look at time slot. It's a time slotted system. Typically, the carbon intensity doesn't, sh doesn't change that often. We're talking like 15 minute, half an hour kind of granularity. So our optimizer runs at about that scale. And again, remind you that we're talking about training jobs that are l long, l long running jobs. Um, so we solve the, an optimization problem that we formulate, and I'm going to show you a glimpse of that. We make some assumptions. We make, of course, we look at the cluster as a whole. So we kind of aggregate the efficiency of the cluster in some, an, an approximate linear power profile, linear in, in the utilization of, of the resources. We assume that allocation is equivalent to, many, to utilization, which is not quite true. But that's the assumption that we make. There are some things that, that Casman doesn't get involved with. For example, the scheduling within a cluster. We say that job goes to that cluster, but the scheduling within a cluster is not a Casman thing. Maybe it's a Peaks thing or some other scheduler plugin in that, uh, in that cluster. 
All right, so, so as I said, Kazman is, is a decision maker and this box here in the middle. It relies on a multi-cluster management platform of some kind. It relies on a job a queuing and dispatching kind of system and as well as a mechanism to, to transfer jobs uh, transparently from a central location, which is a, a cluster as well. So we, th this thing on in the left here lives in a cluster, a management cluster, or what we call a, uh, a hub cluster. And then you have the multiple clusters here. What jobs run are the spoke clusters. Uh, so the, for example, the management of the job lifetime and, and so on and so forth is part of that multi-cluster management platform, which is not CASBIM. I didn't talk much about preemption. We also, uh, even though you will not see here in that presentation, that a job, if a job is preemptible and, we, and Kasman finds that it's better to cut it into pieces and spread the pieces when the carbon intensity is low, then it will do that. So it will, it will make pre preemption if the job allows preemption is, is if it's checkpointable. So that's all part of the optimization problem. <clears throat> Speaking of optimization problem, here it is. I'm not going to go through the details of what it is and so on and so forth, but I'm going to give you a glimpse. This is a language in which the problem is specified. Think of it as a programming language, but it's a mathematical language. So the idea is for each job, I is going to be scheduled on cluster J at time slot T if this variable is one. And that's the variable of the optimization problem. It's an integer program. So it's either zero or one. And you either run it there or you don't run it there at that location at that time. There are a bunch of constraints and an, and a, an objective which is in red. Our objective is a multi-objective uh, optimization. One has to do with carbon. The second I talked about briefly, which is we want to uh, finish the job as close as possible to the deadline. And the third one is we try to, to schedule jobs as early as possible, not only by the deadline, but as early as possible so that the finish time, the make span, if you will, of all jobs is also minimized. <clears throat> Subject to the constraint that the resources are satisfied. So the pieces, the components of, of putting the system together, we rely on a couple of open source Projects. So Caspian is, again, a decision maker, is an optimizer, is a solver. It takes the problem periodically and it solves it. It depends on, and it relies on, M, we chose MCAD as our, uh, Q, our job queuing component that queues jobs. And the jobs will be, uh, there's something that we call a, uh, a dispatching gate. And the gate is set originally similar to what Q has. Q has also a suspend kind of gate uh, that Casman would remove that when the job is ready to be executed. And, and it will also um, <coughs> uh, put the, the target cluster that has been decided on, that, on the job uh, specification. Uh, MCAD will do the job queuing, lifecycle management, and then we rely on this other project, which is Coop Stellar, another open source project that's going to do all the, the mechanism for sending the job to the spoke cluster, managing the job life cycle, syncing the results back, and, and all of that uh, stuff is part of Coop Stellar. <clears throat> all right. Um, I think I'm almost done. <clears throat> We, so in Kubernetes terms, we added a couple of custom resources that we needed. One is the one on the left here in the purple is cluster info. So cluster, each cluster in the spoke cluster has a cluster info object that has information about that cluster, mainly the resource availab availability on that cluster and that changes over time. So some controller here is, is updating that as well as the geography where this spoke cluster is. And then we get the carbon intensity through uh, web services, typically that we go and find what the carbon intensity is for that location. So we go and fetch that through a carbon monitor component. So cluster info is, is a custom resource that is synced 
through Coop Stellar up in the hub cluster where the where Caspian lives. The other, the other custom resource is something that is called an app wrapper, and that's really part of, of MCAT, so this is not new. So MCAT has this uh, app wrapper, custom resource, that wraps everything related to the job in this one object. So if it's about a pod, a deployment, a collection of deployments, the seekers, the config maps, everything in this one thing, which is an app wrapper. The app wrapper is the unit or the granule of scheduling. So that sits in a queue. Um, the MCAT has two components, one in the hub cluster, which is the dispatcher. That's where the queue is. And when it's time for the job to be scheduled, uh, when the scheduler optimizer, which is Caspian, sets the gate, and, and, and uh, then that job is then dispatched, will go down to the particular spoke, target spoke cluster through Coop Stellar. MCAD runner will take that job as an app wrapper, will unwrap it, and all the API objects of that job will then live and run in the spoke clusters. If it's not preempted, let's not talk about preemption now. The app runs in here, and it will be washed by the by the MCAD runner. Uh, eventually, it will be finished, and that will be synced back up in the spoke cluster. That's where the user interacts with, with the job. And I think I'm going to hand it over to uh, Taeba to show you a demo. Thank you, Asser. So uh, now in the second part of our presentation, I'll show you a demo of Caspian. Uh, you can also scan this QR code to uh, get more details on how to set up uh, the demo. Uh, so here we consider uh, four local clusters, all are built by K3, K3D, one is hub, and we have three spoke clusters. On hub, uh, we deploy Caspian, uh, that has two main components, uh, carbon monitoring and a scheduler. Carbon monitoring periodically interacts with uh, carbon intensity service to get the updated values of carbon intensity of those spoke clusters. Uh, then scheduler also runs periodically and at the beginning of each period, it gets all workloads that are in the system, the ones that are queued in the hub and the ones that are running in this, uh, in this post. Then, uh, based on the status of workloads and based on the status of clusters, like their carbon intensity in the next 24 hours, their resource availability, it decides uh, which workload should be executed in the next time slot and on which cluster. It also may uh, decide to uh, suspend the execution of some workloads due to sustainability. And then we also have MCAT dispatcher here uh, that um, for those workloads that are their target is set by uh, Caspian, uh, MCAT dispatcher will dispatch them to the target cluster and with the help of Sinker. Uh, so Sinker will like, uh, downsync these workloads and also upsync the status of those workloads to the from Spark to, to the hub cluster. And then on each spoke cluster, we run MCAD runner, we deploy MCAD runner. So MCAD runner will uh, extract all uh, Kubernetes objects in a wrapper and uh, execute them. And also we have con cluster info controller in MCAD runner that um, updates cl cluster info custom resource. So it periodically gets uh, the status of spoke cluster, like the available resources, GPUs, CPUs, and also the geolocation of clusters. And then, uh, so for example, in the demo that I'm going to show you, uh, we set the geolocation of spoke one to Germany, spoke two to uh, one state in Japan, and spoke three to uh, Ontario in Canada. Uh, we also have a load generator that over 24 hours will submit workloads in the format of app wrapper to the hub cluster. Uh, 
So yeah, let me show you an example of an app wrapper. So here, uh, so as uh, uh, was stated before, you can app as many objects as you need in a single uh, app wrapper YAML file. Uh, you can just need to list them in generic items part. For example, here we have a single pod, but you can also have job, you can have any other Kubernetes object. Um, in addition to that, you can also specify some uh, fields that is uh, needed by Caspian. What is the expected uh, runtime for this app wrapper and what is the deadline for finishing this app wrapper? So if a user doesn't specify, then just Caspian use the default values. So, and here is like the distribution of the arrival uh, rate of workloads by our load generator. It's kind of Poisson distribution. And then uh, we assume that the workloads uh, are like long running workloads between one hour to four hours is their running time. And um, their GPU requirements is like between one to five cores. And then we assume here that uh, the jobs uh, can tolerate delays. So here, the slowdown is set to three. Um, you can also set other parameters like, um, to run the demo. For example, you can set the, like the period length, the period length is how often you want to run Caspian, hourly or in minutes. So for example, 120 is in seconds. I want to run it, for example, in every two seconds, every two minutes. You can also set the optimization mode. So basically, uh, the current version of Caspian runs in two modes. One is sustainable mode, and the other one is QS mode. In sustainable mode, Caspian considers uh, not only carbon footprint, minimizing carbon footprint, but also uh, minimizing like the completion time of workloads and lateness of workloads. But you can also run it in QS mode, in which uh, Caspian doesn't consider any weight for uh, carbon footprint. You can also set other parameters like the zones uh, of clusters and also the power characteristics. So uh, here first, uh, let me uh, play this uh, recorded uh, video that shows the steps that you need to go through to uh, run Caspian. Then I will also show you some experimental results. So uh, before everything, you need to uh, clone the repository. And then um, by running uh, create cluster scripts, uh, this script actually will create three spoke clusters and one hub. So you can also, also pass some parameters. So three is the number of clusters that I need, spoke clusters. One is the number of agent nodes and 16 is like the number of GPU cores that I need per node. So then this script will create the Right, so after creating clusters, yeah, it, it takes a little bit of time. Right, so here we have three clusters, the spokes and one hub. The next step is to run, CAS, run MCAT on each uh, cluster. So with this command, uh, on each spoke cluster, MCAD runner will be deployed and MCAD dispatcher will be deployed on the hub cluster. Then the next step here is to run monitoring, um, like a script. So I will explain this uh, plot a little bit later. Uh, just so, so actually what we are, um, showing here like the performance of clusters, like what is the, the live um, carbon intensity in each cluster and what is the GPU allocation. We also show the, um, the overall performance of the system. So uh, the right uh, like terminal here shows the output of here. 
we run Caspian script, and uh, this uh, terminal shows the output of Caspian. In the first period, I haven't like, run the load generator, so no app wrappers in the hub cluster. Uh, that's why you don't see any decision that would be made by uh, Caspian. So just let me explain a little bit this uh, uh, script. So the first line, like, list the app wrappers in the, system, in the hub, then it will, uh, like, get all spoke clusters, uh, what is the available CPU, what is the available GPUs on each, and what is the geolocation, and then it will list the decisions that are made by the optimizer in Caspian. So at the beginning, we don't have any app wrapper, but now we run load generator. Now we should expect uh, in the next uh, like time slot, more decision be made by Caspian. So now you can see two jobs for now are uh, submitted to the hub. And, uh, and here you can see the, the decisions that are made by um, Caspian. We see that both uh, jobs are assigned to spoke three, but why uh, Caspian did this decision, make this decision? Actually, because uh, of carbon intensity. If you look here at spoke three, the geolocation for spoke three is Canada, Ontario, that has the lowest carbon intensity. Uh, uh, so uh, now let me run the remaining part of this uh, video. So if you look at this uh, on the left uh, figures, uh, the first row from top shows the carbon intensity on each spoke clusters. So uh, the left is for Canada, then it's for Japan, then for Germany. So as you see here, uh, Canada has the lowest carbon intensity. That's why in the second row, if you look at the second row, uh, more GPU allocations are assigned to this cluster. But after some points, because uh, Caspian also takes care of the uh, QoS of Roclos, then it also uses the second uh, cluster in Japan to schedule workloads. And so here, just because Japan ha is, I mean, um, is more power efficient. So you see Japan and uh, Germany, uh, their carbon intensity is in the same range, but because uh, Japan is more power efficient, Caspian chooses um, spoke two here. And then, so I am going to explain the next two, two plots in the next uh, slide, but um, here, uh, let me just briefly explain that. Uh, at, at the bottom, you, will, you see two uh, figures. The left figure shows like the total carbon footprint that generated by executing your workloads. Uh, and then on the right, you see the like a histogram of percentage of jobs based on the value of alpha. So what is alpha? Alpha is actually the completion time ratio, um, which is defined based on response time over the deadline. So if this value is, le if uh, for a job, this value is less than one or equal one, this means that that job is executed by deadline. If it's greater than one, means that the job has missed its deadline. So let's see how Caspian can uh, guarantee the, this. So let me go to the next slide. So here uh, uh, we run a Caspian in two different modes. On the left, we run Caspian in sustainable mode. And then on the, le on the right, we run Caspian on QS mode. So we don't have any sustainability concern on the right side, while in the left side, we uh, consider both QoS and uh, carbon footprint in our decision making. And then the first row shows the carbon intensity of each cluster. The second row shows the GPU allocation. And then the third row shows the overall performance of the system. Uh, let me play the... So yeah, over 24 hours, workloads are submitted to the system. So this is just in fast mode, what you are seeing here. Uh, you can compare how uh, workloads are allocated in each mode. Uh, so you will see, so in sustainable mode, the scheduler will start by assigning jobs to the greenest one, close, uh, which is the Canada, and then it will use uh, uh, Japan and after that, it will use uh, Germany. 
while in the QS mode, we see a kind of balanced distribution of row clause. So, and then if you look at the last row, you will see the total carbon footprint execute, uh, generated in each mode. Um, of course, uh, uh, in sustainable mode, we have um, uh, lower carbon emission compared to the QS mode. Uh, but what, what about uh, like other performance metrics about QS? If you look at uh, the second, I mean, there, uh, the, like the value of alpha in each mode, so you will see just uh, in sustainable mode, about like 7% of jobs will miss their deadline. Uh, while in QS mode, because we don't, I mean, the main concern is about QS, uh, uh, less than 1% of row clause will miss the deadline. But um, if you look here, the value of alpha, most of jobs between a value of 1 to 1.2 are finished. So just uh, uh, like lower percentage of jobs are uh, very late. So we, should, uh, we can like, uh, uh, ignore those, those percentages. Yeah, this is like the end of uh, our demo. Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, if, if you have any feedback, please uh, scan this QR code and yeah. Any questions? Yeah, thank you for the presentation. Um, do you make any decision about delaying uh, a job instead of putting it in the, the cluster with the lowest uh, uh, carbon footprint? Right, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, our scheduler here actually consider, it makes two decisions about when to schedule a job and where. So we make both decisions. Some jobs will be delayed if they can tolerate uh, delay, and yeah, we, all, we make decision about both. Yeah, so uh, in that case, how do you choose to delay a job? Uh, because, I mean, you don't know the future, you don't know what the carbon footprint will be. Uh, so we have our uh, optimizer here, look, uh, I mean, the look ahead uh, time window for our optimizer is next 24 hours. So we know what will happen in the next 24 hours for carbon intensity. And based on that, we make decision. Let me add to that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You have a good point. Yes, we, have, we work with predictions of carbon intensities, and nobody knows for sure what's going to happen in the next 24 hours. But given this, the nature, the cyclic nature of the, of the way uh, generation of energy is, then you can predict with good accuracy what's going to happen in the next 24 hours. Any other questions? Yeah, thanks a lot for the presentation. Very nice. I was wondering, do you are you thinking about adding other parameters to the scheduler, like for example, the price of running in one specific location or or the the latency? I'm thinking of enterprise using this and maybe having broader constraint. I assume one, one of the assumptions here is that the three locations have the same kind of server exactly, so their profile is the same, or I don't know. So, The, the power profile is not necessarily the same in all clusters. The, that's the assumption that we make and we work with. But I think you're bringing in an interesting dimension, which is cost. There may be other uh, dimensions as well. Uh, the, the optimization problem that we showed earlier is a multi-objective one, and therefore adding another objective should be straightforward. What's not straightforward, though, is the way to solve it. Uh, we cannot, you can take this problem formulation and get a solver and solve an integer programming problem. If you did that, then you're dead in the water, I can tell you that. If you have hundreds and thousands of jobs and many clusters, it's gonna take forever to solve. So we have a, uh, an approximation algorithm that solves that particular uh, optimization problem, which we didn't get into.
when can we expect this to be available for production workloads? Tayeba. <laughs> <laughs> you go ahead. Still, still in research. Is it some kind of like open research where you accept issues or pull requests? Yes, it is in GitHub. Uh, we, st we started to work on this, so it's, uh, but you're, you know, you're welcome to download and try. Uh, did we put the, the QR for the GitHub? For, yeah. This is like for, oops. What was it at the end? Right. Yeah. This so the one on the left is Caspian, and we have the other two that's already in open source, MCAD and Coop Stellar. MCAD is one way of doing job dispatching. Other ways, as I mentioned before, could be Q, so we could integrate with that as well. We haven't done that yet. Uh, but the, the Caspian is the, is the one on the left. Right. I was wondering, do, are you using uh, Green Software Foundation Carbon Aware SDK to, to fetch the data about carbon intensity or, or you're doing it on your way directly? We don't have our way, we use... Yeah, here we use our electricity map to get the updated values. Yeah, yeah we rely on other open source. Yeah. If no other question, thank you very much. Thank you. And, uh,